everyone. I am here with David and Jonah Stillman of Gen, Gen Z Guru, and they just gave a fantastic talk about Gen Z, so Jonah's generation. Um, can you share a little bit about what's your generation like? Yeah, so first of all, we are drastically different than millennials. We were born between the years 1995 and 2012, so the leading edge is 23 years old, out of college, already in the workplace. We're very competitive, very driven, we're self-motivated, we're a very realistic generation. You know, compare that to millennials who are very collaborative. We are a little bit different, but I think it's exciting as we enter the workforce that Gen Z is really going to change a lot of how corporate America works. Great, and so some of you are already in the workforce. Yes. Um, how should managers work with you to engage and motivate you? Um, and what's well, a generation, you know, you get, the theory behind generational differences is each generation has events and conditions that take place during their formative years. So you have to look at the things that shape this generation. An obvious one's going to be technology. A phone for Jonah, you know, has always been smart. And so the use of technology. And so a lot of times companies, you know, what they'll do is they'll try to dazzle Gen Z. Look, at we have all this technology. And they just kind of assumed it's always there. They're more impressed with people who show how they're using technology smarter than others. So it's not just enough to have it. You really need to go that step further and show we're using it smarter. We've chose not to use technology because we think we can do better here. That's what they want to see. 91% of Gen Z said technological sophistication would impact their desire to work at a company. Uh, and what are some of the other factors that companies need to take into consideration to attract Gen Z? Um, some of the ones that we say is that the idea that many people just assume that my generation only likes to text, we're always on our phone, and granted, like my dad said, we, we know how to use our phones so well, that when it, but when it comes to communicating in the workplace with our coworkers, our bosses, we really like face-to-face -face communication for a few reasons. One, it's very authentic, it's the most real way to communicate with somebody, and it's much more efficient. If you're my boss and you walk over to my desk, you tell me something very quickly, then I can work on it and we can reconvene, reconvene later that day instead of going back you know, on 10 emails. And we know that 84% of Gen Z said that they prefer face-to-face -face communication. And, but you also said that face-to-face -face is not necessarily yes. in person. Yeah, so that was, it's always a question in the speech is that um, we classify face-to-face -face as live two-way interaction. Now granted, in, in the best scenario, like we're doing right now, we're sitting in the same room looking each other in the eyes, but if it has to be through a platform like Skype or Google Hangout or FaceTime, as long as it's live two-way dialogue, you can hear me, I can hear you, we consider that face-to-face -face communication, which is part of the trait that we talked about, which is digital, which is the blending of the physical and the digital worlds, and how my generation, that line isn't blurred anymore, it's just been completely eliminated. And how's it been for you to adapt to, to this? <laughs> uh, well, I've been, I've been studying generations for 21 years, and I can tell you that, like, I probably should be surprised, I'm still dazzled by how often he comes out from so different, it happens every single day, but... I think, honestly, because of what I study, I look at those as great learning opportunities for me. I never try to say, oh, that's wrong, or right, you know, better or worse, it's just different, you know, and then we have great debates, but I find I really love the new perspective because it's keeping me on my toes for sure, and what's nice about, not just Jonah, but I find Gen Zers in general, they're, they're used to being mentored. They've been blessed, you know, with teachers and counselors and parents and all these people wanted to mentor this generation, that they're very open to being mentored, and so that opens it up for just a great relationship. I love working with him and Gen Zers, I do. But you also shared a few stories of, like, like when, I, so when I Skyped, when into, Skyped the meeting. into the meeting. Can you so that's a perfect example, is that, you know, we had a meeting, and I didn't tell my dad whether I should have or not, it happened, but I chose to Skype into a meeting instead of going physically there. He said... I should have been at the meeting, I thought I was at that meeting, and you know, we always ask the audience at the speech what they thought, and it's always interesting to hear new perspectives, but like we talk about in the digital world, whether it's in person or you know, over a phone or a laptop, as long as you can hear me, we consider that being at a meeting. But what Jonah did learn in that is, it's not as obvious to me, so he's learning a lot about manage how to manage his expectations. And manage up, you know, he should have said, I learned it so many times. <laughs> And one more time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just that he's, you know, so he should have said, Dad, I'm showing up via Skype. You know, we might have debated that out. He maybe didn't tell me because he knew what my answer would be. But um, in general, it's, it's great. We work with a lot of organizations and Gen Zers that they're, they're part of it saying, you know, this isn't out with the old and in with the new. You know, you're going to bring a lot, but you need to understand that not all of it can change and not all of it will work. And there's a lot of things that boomers, Xers, and millennials have done really well that continue to work. 
And that's why I think where being open to mentoring really paves the way. We've been hearing about work-life balance for quite some time now, but you have an interesting take on mm -hmm. the work-life blend, not yeah. balance. So once again, this kind of merges with the fidgetal trait that it seems strange to allocate nine to five to work and then the rest of your time for the person for your personal life because in today's world work isn't really a place anymore it's wherever you can get a wi-fi signal so to dedicate just nine to five to work seems strange because everyone knows that chances are when you're home after dinner you have to check emails and you have to manage things so if you're at a place of employment we always say that it shouldn't be a problem if you're one of your employees has to step away during the day for a doctor's appointment or their kid's piano recital because like i said work work doesn't stay at the office work is always with you and to the flip side, a lot, a lot of Gen Zers will say, and if I have to put in some hours on a Saturday, it doesn't matter. You know, so sort of work is 24-7, but so is my life. So that's sort of the blend concept. And with that attitude, we've seen a lot of workplaces and a lot of HR departments and just start to really re-strategize their approach to work-life balance because of this generation. And you said something very interesting about the way that you communicate. Um, yeah. So with symbols? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a whole new thing is that we talked about how in 2015 the Oxford Dictionary Word of the Year was the tears of joy emoji and it's because my generation is the generation that is able to express themselves in writing with emojis. We think in symbols instead of words and that, you know, as Gen Z continues to enter the workforce, it's going to change corporate communication. It's going to add a little bit more color, a little bit more excitement and a lot of times people will feel scared by this or threatened and I always say I always, it's not such a bad thing maybe if it is a little bit more exciting, and although it might cause some gaps at first, I think everybody will be able to figure it out. And part of the mentoring on that then comes in, you gotta train them that look, look, you know, you're creating a lot more confusion, even some ambiguity, room for interpretation by using emojis, and in corporate communication, we're used to black and white. So it's just not right or wrong, but again, those are some of the things that we're having to mentor Gen Z on, but yet they're opening our eyes uh, open, and I mean, I'm sending emojis now, so. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. pleasure to have you. Thank you for having us. And thanks for tuning in.